what are my sponsorship assets worth? And the genesis of this discussion actually started with a conversation a couple months ago where we had um, an LSC in visiting and talked about, you know, I'd love to get sponsors more involved in our LSC level, love to find opportunities for them to get involved with our clubs, but I don't even know what my assets are. I don't even know where to start. I don't know what somebody thinks is going to be worth anything, and, and then I don't know what it's worth. Um, at the end of the day, I just kind of make it up and, and see if, if that, you know, if I can sit down at the table and convince them that that's the value, then, then we'll go with that. Um, that never feels very good uh, from a negotiating standpoint to sit down. If you don't have confidence in what you're bringing to the table, uh, then that makes the sale a lot harder uh, from, from start to finish. And so I think Chuck started the day talking about um, it's no longer I have a space for your sign, you should put your sign here. It's um, this sign gives you, you know, viewership of all these people and it puts you in front of this very powerful audience. What is the value that we're bringing to potential partners? And so what I want to do today is provide you with, um, really with a process that you can take home tonight, tomorrow, um, and actually get started. And it's four steps. You just work your way down the path. And at the end, you're going to have, you know, here's my list of all my inventory, all my assets that are there. Here's what each one of those individually are worth. And here's how I can put them together and sit down across the table and come with confidence to say, Here's what I'm giving to you, uh, here's the value of it, and here's why. Um, and so to try and start taking that path a little bit. So as I said, it's four steps. This is really the first stage of the sales process. It's your asset development. I'll go through each one of these individually, um, and we're actually going to kind of go through it as a group to say, let's take a couple um, prospective assets and, and go through the steps. So first, what do you have? Second, how many people are going to interact with it, see it, hear it, uh, taste it, whatever it is that that product is that that, that company is putting in front of your audience, how many people are going to interact? What's the value of each one of those interactions? And then put it together for them so that it's really easy. I want to be a gold partner, I want to be a silver partner, I want to be a bronze partner, or you know, provide that framework for them. So before we get into step one, let's take an idea of what are assets, right? Um, so here they are. These are real easy to see at the major league level. Um, where are people getting involved? Uh, we've all probably at least watched uh, something on television, watched a professional sports game on television, been to it, entitlements, uh, sponsorship uh, on the scoreboard, iconic there at the, the outfield wall. It's fantastic. I'm not the Denver Broncos. Um, I don't have this, is what we usually get back. And that's not true. Um, so around swimming today, you are seeing people all over the sports world do exactly these things at the local swim club level. Um, jersey sales, you can, put, uh, you can put logos on your swim caps, on your swimsuits. Um, that is an option for you. You can do anything that major league teams are doing. It's just a matter of scale. Okay? And that comes into how many people are going to see it and what's the cost of that. But don't sell yourself short. Um, these, these are all happening in our community right now. I think Daryl said in his um, presentation that we're, we're getting a little bit further than this. We're getting past um, putting your sign on the wall, right? How can we engage further? What else do we have? We have a lot. All of us at, at swim clubs around the country, all of you have a robust volunteer network. There's an opportunity for an organization that says that they want to get involved in giving back to their community and encouraging volunteerism in the community. So is there somewhere there to get them involved in that program, in the Learn to Swim program? Um, that's one of the reasons that Phillips 66 is involved with our Make a Splash program, because it provides that safety. And that's the story that they can tell along with that partnership. Maybe you don't own your own facility. That happens all the time. You don't have the opportunity to put a sign on your wall because you don't own your facility. Can you make a, a vinyl sign right there, um, put some sponsorship logos on it, bring it with you everywhere you go, hang it up in every meet. Um, if you don't own your own facility, put your logo on the team t-shirt. Those kids are wearing it to the meets, they're wearing it to school, it's additional times that people are getting to see it. Um, one of, a great uh, idea that came out a little bit earlier today was um, how do we drive business back? If we're talking to a restaurant, how can I tell them that my kids are going to go eat pizza for you? Like, they're, they're going to go there, they're going to eat. Hold your team registration at their facility. We're going to hold our opener team registration. We're going to hold our closing team party there. And, and 
throughout the year, we'll provide coupons that are going to push, uh, push all of our members there. So now you've brought business directly to their community twice, directly to their business twice, and throughout the year, you're able to track how many of those specific coupons come in, because we gave each one of those coupons out. So that's how I can track to show you the value uh, of the sponsorship and the dollars that you invested with our club. The most powerful asset we have, you've heard Matt say it multiple times, is our quality over our quantity. Um, USA Swimming, we are a very attractive demographic across the board, across the country. Top level, 400,000 swimmers um, across the country, average age of about 12 and a half years old, and we skew slightly female. 56% female, 43% male. That's great. Those are good things to know. What else? What else about them? As Matt said, um, the average household income well above average of the, of the US, $125,000 in, in the average swim family. Our average swim family stays involved with USA Swimming and our programs for 10 years. It's a long time that they can interact with some of those brands that are investing in our sport. Um, we're loyal to partners. Earlier today, um, percentage went up. 65% of USA Swimming families are more likely to support our partners um, because they support USA Swimming um, and also self-identify as leaders and influences in their peer groups. Let's push a little bit further. Ask a few more questions. Who are you when you aren't at the pool? Tend to lead healthy lifestyles. Um, I think it's 60, 67% um, identify healthy eating as a major component of their healthy lifestyle. So there's a whole opportunity with um, healthy grocery stores, healthy fast food, other items like that. Um, travel regularly. Uh, USA Swimming Family travels eight to 10 times a year. Uh, that includes swim meets and then on their own. So again, what opportunities are, are there with that? Um, and 73% of USA Swimming members will pay extra if the product is environmentally safe. By nature, we care about the environment because of what our sport is and what we do. How can we use that? It just adds to your case of how valuable uh, you are. And that's what the asset is, right? Your team, if you've got a team of 100, you have a team of 100 um, affluent, uh, loyal, highly educated um, customers that you can start to bring to businesses and start to talk to them about how you can change their buying behaviors uh, to support your partners. And th that's what we're looking to do at the end of the day. The other piece is who are you? Because your club's different than the national club. It's relative to your local community and, and to who you are. SurveyMonkey.com, it's free, and it allows you to go out and make a survey and ask your team who they are. You know your team better than anyone but I bet you could know them better. What do they do outside the pool? What are they interested in? Where are they going? Where do they spend their money? Um, and, and that's how we found out these pieces. You guys probably get our email where we ask you to go on and fill out some information. Who are you? Um, and, and, and what do you do outside of the pool? You can do the same thing, and it just gives you more and more and more power um, to really impress upon potential sponsors um, this incredibly valuable asset of a customer base for them. So once you get an idea, you look around, inventory your assets. Literally make a list. Um, what are options? These are 20 some options that we came up with pretty quickly. Um, they're not the be all to end all. Some of them may not make any sense for your club whatsoever. Um, I may be missing some huge thing that's been your best asset, um, but they're there and, and, and you need to start your list. The next step, when you're doing this, just Keep in the back of your head, right next to each one, how much does that cost me? You know, how much does it cost me to send out a mailing list? Probably nothing. You might annoy some parents, but probably nothing um, as far as dollars and cents. But how much does it cost me to add a sign to my scoreboard? There's a real cost to that. And you need to be able to understand that um, if you were to go out and sell somebody a scoreboard sign, if you sell it for $3,000 and it costs you $2,500 to put up, that wasn't the best deal for you. You can do better. So to keep the cost of what each of these assets, keep that in mind for you. Now you've got your list. Uh, let's go through and figure out how many people does each one of those reach. So what I've done is just taken the top six uh, off of our asset list, and, and we're going to keep with these six and make our way through the rest of the steps. So 
an on-site banner, how many eyeballs are going to be on that? And not individual people, how many times are they going to see it? It often takes people multiple times to see a sign before it changes any of their behavior. So how many times are they going to see it? How do you find out that number? How many people come into your pool? Um, and it may not be that simplistic. These are some very easy ideas, but they kind of take you down the path. A scoreboard sign, how many eyeballs? That's a huge number. Um, but there's, there's reason and logic behind that. So let's say um, that, that number comes from 100 kids on my team. I'm going to have a, a swim meet. They're each going to bring two people. I've got 300 people total in my uh, facility right now for the swim meet. People look at the scoreboard after every single race. Every heat, they look at the scoreboard, check the times. 22 events. Uh, let's say we run five heats in each one, multiply that, that by the 300 people that are looking at it, 33,000 eyeballs for that meet. Run three to four events, there's your number. So they're not made up. I've made them up for the purpose of this. <laughs> but there's a way to get to them to give you confidence that they're real numbers. And that's what we're looking for, is to get past the stage of, I don't know, I made it up, um, and, and just try to convince somebody, but to be able to stand up there and say, no. Absolutely, this is what that's worth to you. So we move on to that stage. What is it worth? Take a step back real quick because you'll notice throughout this, uh, I've talked about value, not price, because there is a difference. There's absolutely a difference between the value that you bring versus the cost or the price that that potential partner is going to pay. So we have a lot of X factors that make it more valuable than just the dollars um, written on the check. First and foremost, the attractive demographic of our swimming household. We've talked about that. We're affluent, we're highly educated, uh, we're very loyal to sponsors, and then depending on who you're talking to, maybe some more factors come in and make it even more valuable. Who is seeing it is just as, if not more important than how many times someone sees it. Um, also, the brand association with USA Swimming, the graphic that just recently went up. You have the ability to connect your clubs to the US national team, to some of the best athletes and swimmers uh, in the world. And you can use USA Swimming marketing programs to do that, to kind of bridge that gap and tell that story. The last piece is the opportunity, um, and I say opportunity, not ability, because everybody has the ability. But what makes it valuable is to actually do it, uh, to track and report on the return of your investment. We talked earlier about using coupons, special coupons that only your team gets, so it's very clear how many are going back. Take pictures, take pictures of someone's sign on their wall. More, take pictures of the crowd, of how many people are looking at that sign on the wall. Um, show them what this looks like and how many people are getting in front of their branding. If it's a sampling opportunity and you've given them a table on your deck to hand out free sandwiches or Take pictures of what that looks like. Track how many people came through and tell them that because that makes a huge difference the next year when you come back through. The end of the day, what all of this means is that swimmers are worth more. Our eyeballs are worth more than the guy driving down the highway uh, and, and seeing the, the billboard because it's a very targeted group of people. I know there's other sports in the room as well. I don't know your demographics, but I imagine it's a very similar case. Um, all of these sports, youth sports, high family involvement, um, many of our Olympic sports take you through college as part of your development. So many of these demographics hold true. Our eyeballs are worth more. So as that comes together, you can see that now standardize a formula across the board. Okay? Couple things on this point. These are not gospel. These are suggestions, ideas. They don't follow an industry standard. There isn't an industry standard, per se, because each of your local communities is different. What your economy looks like in LA is different from Dayton, Ohio. And so it should reflect that, absolutely. Um, the key to, to see here is that there are different per view prices, or per interaction prices, if that's what it is. So something like an on-site banner, depending on the size, when I look at that, that's all I've seen. I looked at that to see that. So that may be a more valuable view than a scoreboard sign where I really, I looked at the, the time on the sign and I noticed, I looked at the time on the scoreboard and I noticed your sign. So you have some differences, but again, there's logic behind it. There's a reason for it. And it helps you when you talk uh, to a potential partner about why it is what it is. You can see as you go down, down the list there. I caution you here, one thing is 
you've now made this promise, right? You've now said that that on-site banner is going to be seen 10,000 times. And so you need to be willing to show that, um, to find out how you can figure out how to show that it's been seen 10,000 times. And ideally, what you want to show is that it's for every dollar that they spent, you actually delivered a dollar and a half in value. So you want to over-deliver every time, if possible, over-deliver. Um, you always want to hit the mark, but if you can do more, do more every time. The last piece is to develop packages. Make it easy. Um, this, this makes it easy for you. This makes it easy for the partner as well. A couple things that it does for you. It provides a framework. So now you're all talking the same language. They can see quite quickly that they can't ask for everything and pay nothing. It doesn't work that way. If you want everything, you need to be at that end of the table. If you don't want to pay very much, you need to be at this end of the table. The other thing to remember, make this add up. Okay, So I've now put it on paper that if I'm um, debating between being a bronze partner or a silver partner, that in my head, adding a heat sheet ad and the opportunity for sampling should, should add about $1,500 worth of value. We can all do that math. So make sure it adds up as you move through the packages. Again, this is just a framework. There's always opportunities to, flat, to switch um, assets in and out. You know what each one of them is valued because you did the work in the last step. So if you want to switch things back and forth, go for it. If you've got a partner that says, you know, I'd like to be the gold partner, but I'd also like to be the only person with my logo on your swim cap, a very high value asset. I can't do both. Okay, what if we you know, put the logo on the swim cap in, take out the on-site banner, and now I can, I can figure out what that package looks for and, and hit you a little bit better um, what, with what makes sense for your business. All of those pieces are important. The other thing and why this helps you is that it opens up so many of your opportunities. You have an option for somebody on the higher end to really get invested and to really drive business to their club. You also have an option um, on the lower end for a local company that wants to be involved in their community um, and be able to give back and be able to get their ads and their logos out there for you. That's where I'll end, really, with the four steps again. This is one way to develop some confidence in what you're saying when you sit down at the table. Um, the, last piece, uh, the last piece, actually, that I'll end with is all of these values, right? The values in the eye of the beholder. Um, you may run into a potential partner that disagrees with you on the value. Um, they may think that it's worth something else. That's okay. In fact, that's wonderful. That's, that's a great conversation to have because at the end of the day, you're having the conversation, which is really the biggest goal here, right, is to be able to have that conversation. They see value in it, and they've looked so hard to really determine what that value is. Wonderful. Let's chat. That's where you want to get to. <laughs>